The most simple swapping would be in a deck of size two. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just reducing our deck to size two. And then I modified the shuffle method a little bit to make it super, super, super simple. All that shuffle does, I commented everything that we had in here out and it's gonna swap cards zero and one. That's as simple as it gets to actually swap cards. And here's that original swap code here. Let's go ahead, give this a run and see what in the world is happening. Our original deck had an eight and a jack but our shuffle deck has two jacks. It's definitely the time to not bet money if this is what occurs after a shuffle in a game you're playing. There's a duplicate, but let's look and see in computer science what in the world is going on. So I have right here the code. This is the code that actually ran for us. Um, I know there was an I and a J, but our I was zero, our J was one, so we can just think about these actual values here. Whatever cards are here, I'm just gonna call it card A, card B. So what's happening? This executes first, and this says card zero equals cards one. So what's gonna happen in that situation? And let's get some room in here so I can I don't know that I need this for now. I'll get that out of the way. All right, so here's our original situation before we called anything. So what's gonna happen here? All right, card at position zero is gonna get the value of the card at position one. So that means here's the position zero. So that means B the value of card at position one, this value is gonna go into the zero position. So what we're gonna end up with is this. And then what we're gonna do, the second part of this, card at position one is gonna get the value of card at position zero. So now it's gonna take this card value and put it into the next position. So you're gonna end up with BB like that. And that's not a swap, that's overwriting. So what we need to do is something different. We can't overwrite. This first step is where we're having a problem right here. We gotta do something before we actually uh, do this. So I'm gonna call it step zero. It's gonna happen before step one. Then we're gonna need a temporary card. Uh, we'll call it card temp equals, and this is gonna save the original card that's about to be overwritten. So for us, it'll be cards zero. So this will save the value before we overwrite and lose it. Then in this second one, we can't actually run this code because, let's see, so we have, we have this temp now, which is gonna equal the A card, this original card here. So this line of code here needs to significantly change. And what it needs to change to, instead of setting cards one equal to card zero, cards one needs to equal temp so that we don't get the B here, we get the value that temp had. So temp had the A value and then that value goes into the other position. All right, let's go ahead and just modify this code so it works not just for one and zero. All right, so we're gonna need a Oh, I hate coding in text editors. Card temp equals, and we're gonna save the one that's about to be overwritten. Semicolon, now we do the swap, and then instead of setting cards J 
to what's in card's eye because they're both already going to have the same value. Here's where we put the temp back in. All right, so this is how you do a swap properly. You temporarily store the value, then you set one value to the other value, and whichever uh, one you didn't set first, so we set I first, we now set J to that temporary value. And this should work back in NetBeans. We need to be in deck, swap cards, dun dun dun, paste, format, tab tab, run. Again, we're just doing that deck of size two. Oh, look at that, beautiful, beautiful. So it did swap the order. Now we can get rid of that. We'll put our original code back in. Uh, it's not very exciting to run out of deck of size two. However, let's just go ahead and do it. There we go. I want to try this on various sized decks. So let's run a little for loop here. I equals uh, the smallest deck. That's interesting is deck. Uh, we'll do a one just to see what happens. Uh, I less than 10. All right, this will just loop our code here. Alt shift down is how you move things. Uh, and of course our new deck we want to go with I. Tap all that over. Uh, and we'll do a couple of new lines just to space things out. Okay, and this again is how to quickly run some test cases. So why in the world did I do this? It's not exciting to look at, however, your shuffle code should work on decks, and actually it should work on deck of size zero. And, and your constructor, that new deck constructor, better work on size zero also. Um, so let's see if, there we go. So worked on size zero, worked on size one. Uh, size two is the first interesting one to look at. Here's size three. It's possible that it doesn't actually change the order depending on what random number came out. So just keep that in mind. It may not be as random as you as, as you might be thinking in your head. The shuffle may not be that random, especially if there's only three cards in it. Um, this one is shuffled. I'm looking to make sure there's also no repeats that show up unless there's a repeat in the original. Oh, look at that. We have two 3Ds. So we have th two 3Ds. That's fine. <laughs> two two S's. And again, two two S's. This one has all different cards and they're different orders here. So what I mean, there's like not, sometimes you're gonna see some cards in the same position, that's okay. Uh, but it should shuffle things up nicely. There we go. All right, so that's the swap explanation and testing it to make sure it actually works from the degenerate or the zero case up through, uh, I could go past 10, I could do a 52 card deck, but uh, that I'm not gonna be able to see if it actually works or not. So I think once you go past 10 or so, it becomes very hard for a human to check if it works.